As I shared last night, Jesus told me years ago, a person will never receive beyond their expectancy. Are you listening? You can't receive beyond your expectancy. Isn't that good news? See, if you're not expecting, you can't receive anything. The only people that received from Jesus were the ones that came to him. Think about it. And then he didn't even pray for them. He would say, according to your faith, let it be unto you. According, in other words, the same measure that you trust me is the measure I'll give back to you. Isn't that good news? Yeah. So we have to have an open heart. And the Bible tells you he'll give us exceedingly above and beyond anything we dare ask or think. Amen. That's good news, isn't it? A beyond what we dare ask or think. And all things are possible to him who believes. So we have to have an expectancy. Yeah. Don't, don't sit there and say, well, if it's God's will, he'll do it. That's not true. See, the reason why the power of God is so limited nowadays compared to what it was a hundred years ago. You talk to people even 80 years ago or even back in the 50s, the power of God was just all over the earth. But then religion came in. False doctrines, p people teaching that, well, it may not be God's will or maybe God wants you sick or maybe this. That's not true. The word of God is true. Are you listening? The word of God is true. It never changes. When Jesus appeared to me, he said, I created the heavens and the earth with my spoken word. Are you listening? Then he gave me the scripture in Peter that if one word of God was to fail, the whole earth would disappear. And we're still here. <laughs> Isn't that true? So we have to base everything on what God's word says, not on what religious people or, or people with big titles. There's only one person that we're to look up to, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The author and finisher of faith. So I want to encourage you, don't, don't get confused with the Bible does not change. And the Bible is God's instruction manual for every born-again believer. Isn't that good news? This is your instruction manual. But even better news is this. What does it say on the Bible? The New Testament. Isn't that true? How many of you know what a testament is? It's the same thing as a last will and testament. When someone, when they die, they leave a will for you. Now, if, if someone doesn't understand me, will you? Okay. So it's the, the testament. The New Testament, you had the Old Testament. The New Testament is based on better promises. Amen? Amen. See, beware of people that always go into the Old Testament. Because Jesus said, I give you a New Testament based on better promises. Isn't that true? Yeah. Yeah. But this is his last will and testament left to you. So the word of God is for you, not for someone else. And when people say, well, I don't know God's will, in the book of 1 John, the, the fifth chapter says that his word is his will. So if you want to know what God's will is, just read the Bible. That's his will. The word is his will. Isn't that true? Yeah. Well, I want to share some good news with you today. Are you ready for good news? Amen. Real good news. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, the gospel means good news. And the reason why the power of God is not as great as it was before is because religion has made it into bad news. But it's good news. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And these signs will follow those who believe. Isn't that good news? See, what happened in, after the, after, in the 1960s, the teaching movement started. Up to then, people just prayed and believed God and everything happened. Well, when the teaching movement started, then they started seminaries and big universities. And people would go to a university or a seminary for four or five years to learn about God. But they weren't called to God to be pastors. Are you listening? 
But yet, when they graduated, they became pastors. Well, when the power wasn't there, they explained it away. Because when the power was over the full gospel church somewhere, they, the people say, why don't we have it? They say, well, it's not for today. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? And you always know when someone's called to God because there's a joy and excitement to serve God. It's not, well, I work 40 hours a week as a pastor, hallelujah. None of that nonsense. It's the excitement, like the music you have here. If you can't be excited about this music, then somebody needs to check your pulse. <laughs> Isn't that good news? So the gospel means good news. And we need to take this good news and share it to the world. Are you listening? It's good news. He paid the price in full with his blood. Jesus paid the price. When he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. He paid the price for every sickness, disease. He paid the price for, for, your, for your spiritual salvation. He paid the price for your sins, and he paid the price for, of, of poverty. He became our poverty that we may become rich in Jesus. Are you listening? He took every sickness on the cross. He can't give you a sickness. He already took it. Acts 10.38, how Jesus went about doing good, who were healing all who were pressed of the devil. Then he said, the things that I've done, you'll do greater. He gave you his spirit. The spirit of God is inside of you. Can you imagine? People in the Old Testament, they, all, they would only dream that even the presence of the spirit of God. They would have to tie bells around a rabbi around his legs or his, and he'd go into the tabernacle and if the bell stopped, it meant he had sin. <laughs> they did it nowadays with preachers. There wouldn't be very many preachers left. <laughs> But we have the Spirit of God in us. And Jesus became our sacrifice for sin. He paid the price. Now I'm sure the sheep all like that. Because <laughs> they had to take a sheep and sacrifice it to pay for your sins. But Jesus became your sin. And he paid the price. We have good news. We need to tell the world the good news. You have the power listen to me, to give someone eternal life. Can you imagine? Nowhere up to 2,000 years ago can anyone even dream of eternal life. But you have the power. You have the very power to go to somebody and give them eternal life. You have the power to give them Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that would give them life in heaven for all eternity. Think about it. Do you realize that? That if you had a cure for an illness, and you had some chemical or something that would cure illnesses, you would, you would shout, you'd be running up and down the road saying, I've got the cure, I've got the cure. You don't have to die. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to suffer, I have the cure. You've got the cure already. Do you realize you can bring the healing power of Jesus to the world? You can bring the power of, of, of a salvation to people, the power of hope. Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. See, I'm a rancher, so I understand about water and farming and all, because I was also a farmer at one time. But wherever there's water, everything's green. Isn't that true? There's life. You could take water and put it in the desert, and within a couple of years, you have life. And Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, wherever you go. See, we have so much, but religion has stolen it from us. The same religious people that put Jesus on the cross are still around. They're always telling you how bad God is. 
How are you supposed to suffer in all this? But you have the ability to give life. Are you listening? We need to get excited about it. See, we're not excited about it. We're, we're taught, oh, would everything be decent and in order? No. When you're happy and excited, nothing's decent and in order. It's all happy. Isn't that true? I've been to heaven. Believe me, people don't walk around heaven like this. Whoa. Their joy, it's unspeakable. You can't even describe it. Even the flowers and the grass is rejoicing. The trees are swaying. Everybody's rejoicing. Everybody is standing there and just saying, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory be to God forever. There isn't a sad face in heaven. And if there is, it's because someone's smiling and they're standing on their head. And it looks like this. <laughs> but it's full of joy. Are you listening? We have the good news. And when there's an old saying, enthusiasm is contagious. You ever go in a room and the people are all sad? Everybody's sad. But one person comes in all happy. And everybody wants to be around them because it's contagious. We have the good news. Are you listening? I've gone into different countries, strange areas. No one knows me. And people will walk up and they say, I want what you have. And I'll say, what do you mean? They say, there's something inside of you I want. You have something. I've had drug dealers wanting to buy what was inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's some kind of new drug. I said, it is. It's called goss pills. <laughs> but what I'm sharing is this is, this is what the world wants, where a light to the darkness. Jesus said, don't hide your bushel, your light under the bed. Are you listening? We're a light. You have the ability to change lives. It just takes one life. That's all it takes. Is you could be the person that gets the next Billy Graham saved, or the next Catherine Kuhlman, or Another Reinhard Bunke. <laughs> but you could be the one. And then your mission's complete. Isn't that true? We need to be excited. Je Jesus said, freely receive, freely give. The more you give a Jesus. Now, a lot of preachers always, they always take scriptures and turn it into money. Freely receive, freely give. You know. <laughs> what you sow, you reap. But, but that's not what Jesus is talking about because he, Jesus, you know, I've been to heaven. The, the streets are paved in gold. <laughs> Jesus doesn't have any problems with, 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 with money. And he'll give you all the money if you'll seek him first. Are you listening? He'll give you whatever you want as long as he is number one in your life. Unfortunately, many times when people get things, that becomes... And Jesus is in the back. But if you'll always keep him before you, he'll always prosper and bless you. Isn't that good news? But you have the ability to change people's lives. I've gone to places, and they know that you, that, that you have, if I just carry a Bible, they'll come running. They'll run. And they'll get on their knees and cry out, please, please, we want this, Jesus. Are you listening? See, our job's to be fishes of men. It's the Holy Spirit's job to clean and fillet them. Do you understand what I'm saying? We tell people you can't become a Christian unless you quit smoking, unless you quit drinking, unless 